Hi everyone, it's Kaylin Counter from Lake Hope State Park. Today I'm going to talk to you about feathers and feather ID. Now, feathers can be found all over the place because birds can be found everywhere in all types of habitats, urban to rural areas, so you might even find a, a feather in your backyard. Now it's important before we begin that you keep in mind that without a permit, it is illegal to collect and or keep feathers of any native non-game species. So you can touch a feather, you can flip it over, you can take lots of pictures, which is what you actually need anyway, and then you're just going to leave that feather there. This is because of the Migratory Bird Treaty Act that was enacted in 1918 and then amended in 2004 to protect all migratory and native species of any kind of bird in the United States. Okay, first things first, we need to know about the parts of a feather. So, starting at the bottom here, this is the calamus or the quill. This is the hollow part of the feather that sticks into the bird's skin where um, the follicle is at. Then moving up, we have the rachis, which is the center hard part of the feather that goes to the whole length of this particular feather. And then on either side, we have the veins. So the veins are actually created out of lots of little barbs. If you can see, each vein is um, made up of all these little types of pieces. You pull it apart. That stickiness of a feather is actually created by barbules. So each barb has barbules on either side that helps it to stick together. This is a primary wing feather. As you can see from the rachis, the barbs on one side are much shorter than on the other. Uh, primary feathers are located in the front of the wing and provide thrust or uh, violent push upward and lift is provided by secondary feathers which are located further back on the wing and have barbs that are a little bit more equal in length on either side of the rachis. Tail feathers are usually large, maybe not quite this big, but they usually are one of the larger feathers on birds besides the wing feathers. So from the rachis, or this middle line here, tail feathers are going to have veins that are the same width on either side. So if we were to measure from the rachis out to the left edge, and then also to the right edge, it would be the same width. Here we have a few contour feathers. Contour feathers uh, have lots of different shapes depending on where they are on the body. This is more closer to the wing, and these are on the chest and on the back. And they do exactly what their name suggests. They start building the shape of the bird. So as you can see, I have a whole layer of them here. And if we put another layer on, you can really start to see a shape emerging. This kind of feather is called a semi-plume. They provide insulation underneath the contour feathers, and they do have barbs that come off the central rachis, but each barb has smooth barbules, so they don't stick together. They're nice and fluffy and warm. This is a down feather. They provide the warmest insulation and are located near the skin. They're anchored into the skin by the calamus and they lack a rachis. They do have barbs with smooth barbules that radiate from the tip of the calamus, and they form this cute little short, loose, fluffy feather. There are two other types of feathers that are much harder to find. The bristle is a sensory feather near the beak and eyes that is commonly found on night jars, like the whippoorwill and nighthawk. These feathers are short and stiff and lack barbs along the rachis, except for near the base. They help the bird to catch food as they fly. The other sensory feather is a phyloplume. They only have small barbs near the tip of the feather. Phyloplumes are associated with contour feathers and are thought to provide information to the bird about wind, pressure, and feather movements to maintain efficient flight. Thanks so much for joining me today. Hopefully you learned a little bit about how to identify feathers. So get out there. If you find a feather, remember, you can check it out, flip it over, admire it, take lots of pictures to identify it later on, but leave it there where you found it. Until next time, bye.